Assalamualaikum and hello I bid to everyone. Today, we are from group 6 who would like to discuss a topic entitled The Effect of Low pH Food or Drink on Oral Mucosa. So, without further ado, let's have a look what is it mean by pH. pH is the acronym from the words Potential of Hydrogen, which it is a term that used to determine a substance acidity or alkalinity. What is acidity and alkalinity? So, basically, an acid is a compound that adds positively charged hydrogen ions to a liquid, and a base, or also known alkali, adds negatively charged ions called hydroxides into a solution. Acidity and alkalinity of a substance can be measured through a pH scale. The pH scale runs from 0 to 14, where 0 indicates the most acidic scale while 14 indicates the most alkaline or basic scale and pH value of 7 indicates as neutral value. As we can see from the scale, lemon is a good example of acidic food and it is being scored with pH scale of 2, while bleach is a very basic or alkaline solution, is scored as pH of 13. This table was abstract from Medical News Today, showing that in different parts of human body have different levels of pH, for example, saliva. Saliva falls with pH scale of 6.5 to 7.5, which it is slightly alkaline in solution. Later that we realize, slightly alkalinity of the saliva actually will help in remineralization of enamel. Thus, it also helps in fight against cavity causing the bacteria. So, in the next slide, we will discuss on how does the pH level affect oral mucosa. This slide, we will discuss the mechanism of low pH affecting the oral mucosa and formation of dental caries. As all of us know that pH value below of 5 is indicated as acidic solution. So, for example, if a person frequently consume foods or drinks that can lower the pH of their mouths and as the pH goes below 5.5 of the scale, acid will begin to break down the enamel, which then will lead to demineralization. Hence, the longer the teeth exposed to low salivary pH, the more likely dental caries will be developed. Therefore, it is said that diet is the major etiological factor for dental caries and enamel erosion. Next, the food that we eat and the lifestyle habits may affect our dental health in many different ways and this will lead to problems such as dental erosion, the dental cavity, the sensitivity of the tooth, having bad breath and also problems such as mouth ulcer might arise. The dietary habits may also give problems in our oral mucosa, as for example, the frequent consumption of soft drinks, sport drinks, fruit juice that all has a low pH of 2 to 3.5 may increase the risk of dental heart tissue erosion. In a study, of 2012 meta-analysis found more than, more than double the risk of erosion from soft drink as well as uh, an increase in risk from chewable vitamin C tablets. And in another 2015 meta-analysis found that the natural fruit juices, sweet snacks and sweet sour candies uh, is one of the significant risk factor of the erosion. The lifestyles that we lead every day may also give rise to the problem in our oral mucosa. As for example, the consumption of highly acidic fruit and sport drinks 
in combination with decrease of salivary flow and dehydration from a sternous activity that we lead every day may increase the erosion risk. Also, for those who love the frequent snacking, it also is one of the contributor that will lead to the dental erosion. Uh, and for the people who are living with a vegetarian diet and excessive use of vinegar-based dressings also can lead to the increase of erosion. This graph is just to show the correlation of the Stefan's curve with the frequency of snacking. As we know, that the Stefan curve is a graph that shows the condition that will happen after the consumption of sugar in relation to the dental caries. After the sugar intake, the demineralization of the two surfaces will take place uh, and this will happen due to the drop in the pH as the bacteria that we consume in the food um, in the mouth will convert the sugar to acid. Table 2 shows the different type of fruit juice and fruit drinks that we normally consume in our daily life as for example lemon juice and also apple juice. They are actually uh, a different in the pH of these two types of juice which the lemon juice shows that it is uh, extremely erosive compared to the apple juice and actually both of these fruit juice uh, will increase the risk of tooth erosion it also may irritate the gums and soften the enamel and it also eventually will decrease the production of saliva and also change the pH balance in the mouth and this condition will drive the bacteria to grow in the low pH environment as these two fruit juice are very high in acidic content so eventually they also will cause the wear down of the enamel in the International Journal of Scientific Study conducted in year 2013 shows uh, the study about the soft drinks and how does it cause the damage to our teeth. This is due to its two properties, which first, uh, of course, is due to its low pH that will cause erosion on the enamel surface, and secondly, is due to its uh, capability on fermenting the carbohydrate in the drinks and it is metabolized by the plug microorganism and finally resulting in the demineralization and will lead to the dental caries. These slides um, in the table below shows the type of acidic food that we normally consume in our daily life. As for example, in carbohydrates, it actually comes into level of acidity, which is uh, the, low acid, the lower acidity such as crackers, pasta, brown rice, wild rice, and grainy bread, and also in higher acidity level, such as white rice and white bread. We can actually avoid all those food that falls under the higher acidity level to lower the risk of the dental erosion, as the food also comes with another option in the lower acidity level. And it is much better for us to consume the lower acidity level in order for us to avoid the risk of dental erosion. Acidic drinks or food can wear enamel down, weakening it and causing long-term effect. So consuming a lot of acidic drinks or food could lead to tooth pain, tooth sensitivity to hot, cold and air, discoloration of your teeth, increased risk of cavities and abscesses or loss of teeth in extreme cases. The first effect consuming a low pH food or drinks is dental erosion. So what is dental erosion? Dental erosion is the loss of the surface of your teeth due to acid that you eat or drink or acid that coming up from your stomach. These acids can dissolve the crystals that make up your teeth leading to tooth surface loss. We have two types of etiology of dental erosion which are intrinsic and extrinsic. Intrinsic often due to acid reflux because of the underlying problem. Stomach contains many strong acids that are used to digest food. Vomiting and reflux can cause this stomach acid to enter your mouth. Stomach acid are very strong and can cause substantial damage to the teeth. For example, people with bulimia, morning sickness or jet or known as gastroesophageal reflux disease. Next is extrinsic factor. Like our diet, particularly soft drinks, energy drinks or citrus fruits. 
Next, industrial or environment chemicals, medication, and lifestyle. Consuming a lot of low pH food or drinks also can cause dental cavity. Dental cavities or tooth decay are a tiny hole in the hard surface of the teeth. They are caused by bacteria on the surface of the teeth, creating acid out of sugar. The most common culprit is bacterium known as Streptococcus mutans. The bacteria will form a sticky film known as plaque. The causes of tooth cavities are bacteria, saliva, acid, and food particles. The risk factor are too many intake sugary or acidic foods and drinks, poor oral hygiene routine, not getting enough fluoride, dry mouth or known as xerostomia, eating disorders such as anorexia and bulimia, acid reflux disease which can result in stomach acid that will wearing down your tooth enamel. Next, consuming acidic drinks or food can increase sensitivity of the teeth. Have you ever felt pain or discomfort after a bite of ice cream or a spoonful of hot soup? If so, that means you have sensitive teeth. Tooth sensitivity or dentin hypersensitivity is a pain or discomfort in the teeth as we respond to a certain stimuli, such as hot or cold temperatures. So what causes sensitive teeth? Some people naturally have more sensitive teeth than others due to having thinner enamel. The enamel is the outer layer of the tooth that protects it. In many cases, the tooth enamel can be worn down from brushing your teeth too hard, using a hard to brush, grinding your teeth at night, and regularly eating or drinking acidic foods and beverages. Sometimes, other conditions can lead to tooth sensitivity like jerks, bulimia, and gastroparesis. Symptoms of a sensitive tooth People with sensitive teeth may experience pain or discomfort as a response to certain triggers. You may feel this pain at the root of the affected teeth as the most common triggers are hot foods and beverages, cold foods and beverages, sweet foods and beverages, acidic foods and beverages, cold water, especially during routine dental cleaning, brushing or flossing teeth, and lastly, alcohol-based mouth rinses. Bad breath. Bad breath is also known as halitosis or fetal oris. Bad breath odor can be a temporary problem or a chronic condition. According to the American Dental Association, at least 50% of adults had halitosis in their lifetime. The causes of halitosis are poor dental hygiene, smoking, dry mouth, strong foods and beverages, and periodontal disease. Strong foods and beverages include garlic, coffee, and alcoholic beverages. According to the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research, caffeinated and alcoholic beverages can cause dry mouth. Dry mouth does happen while we sleep, leading to morning breath. But when you consume drinks that dry out your mouth, you can have morning breath any time of the day. Next, by Listerine.co stated that acidic foods are the top foods that cause bad breath. The bacteria that cause bad breath thrive on the acidic environment, resulting from low pH food such as lemons, oranges, and tomatoes. It is therefore important to eat such food in moderation. Oral ulcer Definition Ulceration is a breach in the oral epithelium which typically exposes nerve endings in the underlying lamina propria resulting pain or soreness. Appearance usually appear as single ulcer, tender, yellowish paste, red margins, no induration, and soft on palpation. Common sites tongue, lip, buccal mucosa, teeth gum. Causes of oral ulcer injury to the mouth from vigorous brushing, dental work, and accidental cheek biting. Sensitivity to certain foods such as acidic foods, spicy foods, coffee, and bitter grits. 
this is a study of analysis of dietary related factors of recurrent adverse stomatitis among college students by Tian Du. Recurrent adverse stomatitis, or known as recurrent adverse ulceration, is one of the most common oral ulceration. In this study, they found out that frequent consumption of carbonated beverages was an independent risk factors of RAS. The prevalence of RAS was higher in those who frequent drinking of sweet drinks, carbonated beverages, and higher intake of fried foods. The habits of sweet and acidic intake can lead to changes in pH in the mouth. Normally, the saliva is neutral and can maintain the stability of the oral chemical environment, while sweet or carbonated beverages lower the pH and change the oral environment. Next, I will be talking about the research evidence based on this topic. The first research evidence is by Hans et al. with the title of Effect of Rice Sugary Beverages on Salivary pH, Flow Rate and Oral Clearance Amongst Adults. The research states that normal pH of saliva is 6.7 to 7.4, but may become acidic due to the breakdown of carbohydrates by bacteria, releasing acids such as lactic acid. When the pH level goes below pH 5.5, acids begin to break down enamel on teeth. As we all know, pH 5.5 is the critical pH, and critical pH is the pH at which saliva and blood fluid cease to be saturated with calcium and phosphate which leads to enamel breakdown. Also in this research, it states that a prolonged and frequent use of acidogenic drink will lead to repeated, repeated episodes of low blood pH would have the potential of demineralization. However, various host factors like salivary flow rate, buffering capacity and pH as well as the concentration of calcium and phosphate in saliva and the frequency of fluid intake can influence the extent of dental caries. The table shows the intrinsic pH and mean salivary pH at different intervals of time after consumption of different liquid food items and the baseline is the unstimulated saliva. Concluding the table, it shows that sweetened milk took the fastest time to achieve neutral salivary pH as it has the highest pH value among the other beverages. Carbohydrates consumed in liquid form, which is the sweetened milk, usually do not stay in mouth very long, but if they are consumed often throughout the day, chances for developing dental caries increases. And if the teeth are constantly exposed to sugary drinks, the acids produced by bacteria will remain in the oral cavity for a longer time, which could lead to dental caries and erosion. Drinking sugary beverages with meals will reduce chances for developing dental caries and erosion. This is because the stimulated saliva will be produced during eating. While carbonated drinks such as Pepsi, has the highest tendency and the highest potential of demineralization as it has the lowest pH value. Hence, it also has the highest potential to lead to dental caries. The next research evidence is by Sudip et al. with the if title Effects on pH Value of Saliva Following Intake of Three Beverages Containing Apple Juice, a double-blind crossover study. In this research, it states that beverages are known to produce a tremendous drop in the salivary pH as they contain organic acids and sugars. But a few minutes later to the acidogenic challenge, the saliva gets saturated, but at this stage, no demineralization or remineralization will occur as the ion activity product is equal to the solubility product of hydroxyapatite. But if the pH value falls further beyond 5.5, the critical pH value, it will disturb the calcium and phosphate regulation leading to dental caries. The third research evidence is by Wokan T et al. with the title Effect of Acidic Food and Drinks on Surface Hardness of Enamel, Dentin and Tooth Colored Filling Materials. In this research, it states that foodstuffs with lower pH have greater erosive effects. But it also states that pH is not the only factor affecting enamel erosion. The table shows the sample used with their corresponding pH values and neutralizable acidity. The research finds that cola soft drink which had the lowest pH value has the highest change in surface hardness of tooth structure. Enamel was also softened by sports drink and orange juice due to the low pH as well. However, this research quotes Lucy et al. reporting that enamel surface was not softened in yogurt despite having almost the same pH value with sports drink and orange juice. D this is due to the high concentration of calcium and phosphate. Calcium and phosphate content saturates the drink with respect to appetite. Their result did not show reduction in surface hardness of enamel in use by tom yum soup. The duration of exposure used in the study was rather short for a meal. Hence, they concluded that frequency, duration, temperature and manner of exposure to acidic food and drinks has been shown to affect the extent of erosion. The last research evidence titled In Relationship Between Food Habits and Tooth Erosion Occurrence in Malaysian University Students conducted by Manaf et al. stated that drinks with a pH of 5.5 or less tend to erode and soften enamel surface. Examples of common acidic food items that have an increased potential for causing tooth erosion include carbonated beverages, sports drinks, citrus fruits, and fruit juices. 
It also has been proven in in vitro and in situ studies. In addition, certain dietary habits such as retaining an acidic drink in the mouth for a longer period of time could also lead to dental problems. A laboratory study indicated that yogurt does not have erosive potential on enamel even though it is acidic. In addition, it was also found that milk and tea have little or no potential for causing erosion. This is because milk contains high concentration of calcium which is protective against tooth erosion. And it was reported that tea has complex composition and its consumption has been recognized as having some beneficial dental effects because of its appreciable fluoride content, even though tea is acidic. Now, moving on to modification on the effect of low pH inside oral mucosa. The first one is of the practice. Never suck on lemon, limes or any highly acidic fruit. Sucking on lemon, slice. Sucking on lemon slice may give the acid a long time to work on your teeth and causes a lot of damage over time. Other than sucking on lemon, sour candy has the same effect too. It has sugar which favour the feeding bacteria that may cause tooth decay. Next is use straw when drinking fruit juice. The straw will keep it from coming in direct contact with your teeth. The third one, rinse, rinse mouth with water after eating highly acidic fruit to dilute the acid in your mouth and wait at least 30 minutes before brushing. And then uh, the next one is toothbrushing with fluoridated toothpaste. Fluoridated toothpaste will keep your enamel healthy. Fluor fluoride is beneficial to teeth because it helps to rebuild or remineralize weakened tooth enamel, slow down the loose of minerals from tooth enamel, reverse early sign of tooth decay and prevent the growth of harmful oral bacteria. When bacteria in your mouth break down sugar and cut, the, they produce acid that eat away the minerals in your tooth enamel. This loose of minerals is called demineralization. Weakened tooth enamel will leave your teeth vulnerable to bacteria that cause cavities. Fluoride may help to remineralize your tooth enamel which can prevent cavities and reverse early sign of tooth decay. The last one is eat cheese after your fruit. This will raise the pH level in your mouth and increases the saliva production which also helps neutralize acid. According to US Academy of General Dentistry, cheese has been proven to increase the alkaline production in saliva, helping to form a protective shield around the teeth. Cheese also helps to increase the amount of saliva resulting in the increased pH level that could suggest as an anti-cavity properties that relieve chemical compound helping to form a protective shield around the teeth to fight against an acid attack on enamel. The second one is eliminate acidic saliva with an alkaline diet. The first one, eat more veggies. Many veggies are alkaline and will help neutralize the pH in your saliva and the rest of your body. Great choices will include spinach, green beans, red bell pepper, broccoli and asparagus. Next, stacking seeds and beans. Many seeds and beans are alkaline as well as can help you eliminate acidic saliva. Lima bean, navy bean, soy bean and sesame seeds are all great options to add to your diet. Third one, limit breads. Limit breads and other sugar. Sugary food including bread should be limited to support an alkaline diet. This is because carbohydrates take the form of sugar or starches both of which will lower your pH level. And then beware of next is beware of condiments. You even need to think about the condiment you are using. Mustard and ketchup, summer favorites for burgers and hot dogs are very acidic. Other bad condiments include mayo and miso. The third one is stimulate and increase salivary flow rate. Why we need to stim stimulate the saliva? It is because saliva acts as one of the main biological parameters. It provides protection against acid erosion by different ways. First, there is the influence of acquired particles. Second, 
saliva can cause genuine action over the acids. Third, saliva clearance gradually eliminates acid through swallowing. Fourth, saliva presen presence buffering capacity causing neutralization and buffer dietary acid. Fifth, saliva is supersaturated with respect to two mineral content providing calcium, phosphate and fluoride ions which is needed for remineralization. So, we can manage to stimulate and increase salivary flow rate by taking tree gum. It contains xylitol which could as substitute for sugar. Next, drinking plenty water may help to prevent from dry mouth or xerostomia. For patients with xerostomia who cannot independently stimulate saliva, may prescribe with medication. On the last few slides, I will be talking about the case reports. The first case report being taken from European Journal of Dentistry 2008. Here is 63-year-old man was referred to dental school Sulaiman Demerol University by a general practitioner because of excessive loose of tooth structure, especially at the anterior region. A detailed history was taken to determine the reasons of erosion. On his social history, he has a habit of chewing one lemon after every meal on a daily basis. On clinical examination, the tooth wear was observed at the oral dentition, which was extreme at the maxillary anterior region. Moreover, cervical erosive lesion in all teeth were noted. We can emphasize here that dietary factors are the most common etiologic factor implicated in the development of dental erosion. Fruits of fruit juice with high concentration of citric acid are the usual extrinsic dietary instigator of dental erosion. In this report, the excessive wear because of lemon chewing resort with multidisciplinary approach was reported. The slowly chewing lemon has an excessive wear effect, just as it is in this case. Next, case studies is been taken from Hindawi Journal on case report in the district. From this case, a 10-year-old Caucasian male was referred by a general dental practitioner for the management of dental caries and tooth surface loose. So, we moving on to the diet history of the patient. It's revealed the diluted juice, acetonic drinks, and favorite water intake daily, and the patient frequently snack on biscuits, chocolates, and sweets. On clinical examination, it showed that most of his teeth were affected with caries. His oral, as a, his oral hygiene was poor, and the lower left central incisor was non vital. There were signs of erosion on the upper central incisor affecting the mesial and palatal surface. From the picture below, it shows the anterior view of the teeth in occlusion of the patient. The next case study has been taken from the same journal uh, with the previous slides. So a 13 years old Caucasian female was referred by a general dental practitioner for the management of not carrier tooth surface loose of permanent maxillary anterior teeth. The patient did not complain of any pain or hypersensitivity and was asymptomatic. Her dietary history showed that the patient consumed excessive quantities of acidic beverages like Coca-Cola, IR and BRU, which is the carbonated soft drink, and diluted fruit juice. The diluted juice was mixed with mesojule, which is the carbohydrate nutritional drink supplements, and was taken to the bed at night. And the mixed juice was sipped throughout the night. On clinical examination, it reveals generalized dental erosion that had severely affected the palatal surface of all the maxillary incisor and caused a fracture of the mesial surface of both maxillary central incisor. Several restorations were present on the posterior teeth. So here are our references.
that's all from our group. Thank you.